pull in on my notes. All right, um, thanks for Rasaji bringing out the amazing conversation about the quality of open street, quality control of OpenStreetMap. Um, I'm Jackie Mann. Uh, I'm a UC Berkeley senior uh, student. Um, I'm also a research assistant uh, with Professor uh, in Haas School of Business. I'm doing research along with Professor Abhishek Nagaraj. He gave up a um, great talk yesterday, afternoon session. Um, so we're doing research uh, along, uh, on some OpenStreetMap topics. And today I'm uh, going to talk about some quality metrics for OSM. So OpenStreetMap is very popular and it's been used in many different systems and applications. Uh, one particular topic that interests us the most is how good the performance is compared to other maps, such as Google Maps. Uh, since we believe that one of the most important properties of a map is its completeness of, uh, of, of its roads and point of interest, and of course the routing engine, uh, we took two most common types of scenarios, navigation and uh, search point of interest. So, uh, the first approach is uh, routing comparison. Uh, I'm gonna want to compare this with the commercial platform uh, like Google Maps, because uh, we well, use Google Maps more often than not, so it's great to set as a standard. Uh, this will give us a fairly clear idea of how OSRM does. Our second approach is uh, point of interest completeness. Uh, it's basically when I go to somewhere like um, Boulder, you want to search for pizza, uh, how many pizza huts can pop up in OpenStreetMap. And um, for navigation first part, uh, we have two main goals when comparing navigation. We want to know how good is OSRM navigation quality compared to Google Maps. Uh, we also want to know if the routing quality is varied by uh, different regions, uh, by which I mean different counties or different states. So um, the first problem we have is uh, how to find a large set of roads that covers the whole United States. Uh, one road is uh, constructed by two single point, uh, one origin, one destination. Uh, in order to do this, we use uh, open addresses, uh, .io. It's a free and open source database that stores uh, millions of addresses across the states. Um, it's, data is also in many places, by which I mean as a uh, zip code. Uh, however, zip code column becomes mostly empty in many unpopular counties, um, like rural counties. As a result, we wrote a very simple program that could efficiently determine the county ID, aka FIPS, uh, based on coordinates. Uh, it's basically you fit into one point uh, and it will output a polygon which indicates which county you are in. Um, then we randomly chose 100 data points, which is 50 origin destination pair in each county to construct 50 routes in each county. And we fit all of the pairs, uh, fit all of the routes into OSRM routing engine API and Google Maps direction metrics API. It takes us a long time because um, there are about uh, hundreds of thousands of routes and collect data and analyze, and analyze the result. So um, when I'm feeding data into Google Maps uh, metrics, I set the, um, the starting time to be 2 a.m. PDT to avoid most of the traffic. Then we'll look and see a data snippet. Um, you can see the origin uh, led to a long tilt and origin uh, street, the destination information and FIPS, which is county ID. Uh, how, how, how long does Google take to, um, to go from somewhere to um, the other? and how long does the OSM take and their distance. The units uh, of distance are in meters and uh, time in, it's in seconds. Uh, for the first example, uh, they are around the same uh, and um, while well, Google time definitely uh, uses a shorter, much shorter time. So on average, out of about hundreds, uh, hundreds of thousands of routes in the US, Google Maps takes uh, 24.839 kilometers, while OSRM takes 25.6 kilometers. Therefore, overall, OSRM distances are very comparable to Google Maps. Uh, the histogram on the left, I'm not sure if you can see the x-axis, it's a bit of small. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's a plot of number of ratios in, in each interval. The ratio is basically the quotient of Google Maps divided by OSM. Uh, the higher the ratio, the longer Google Maps use for routing and vice versa. On the right is a US map. Um, dark area, it, dark area is, it means that Google Maps use a shorter distance um, than uh, OSRM. Um, and um, the lighter area means OSRM use a shorter distance than Google Map. Okay. So here are the data that I grouped by the county. 
I sort them by the last column, um, which is the quotient, again, the quotient of Google Maps distance and uh, OSRM distance. So that you can see top 10 counties where OSRM is shorter than Google Map and longer than Google Map, respectively. On the, um, for example, the first entry is Colorado, uh, Gunnison, Google, uh, the, the ratio is 1.32, uh, down below our bottom, bottom 10, um, where OSRM distance are higher than uh, Google Maps distance. Okay, so here's a box plot. Um, notice that I separate the US into three regions, the west, the mid, and the east. Uh, the color stands for the regions, basically. Um, there are some spikes. You can see the Massachusetts are high, high above everyone else, and uh, Indiana and North Carolina are kind of at the bottom. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the box plot, the middle line in between each rectangle is the median. And the top is uh, third quartile, and the bottom is like 20, uh, first quartile, 25%, which means um, each point, you can, each point if, uh, if you can see each point, it uh, basically means the county. And um, yeah, it will be uh, more clear if I sorted it. You can see that on the west and east, um, the entries are uh, almost, well, the Google almost uh, has a higher, has a, uh, I say, longer distance than the OSRM because the ratio is higher. I normalize the axis, uh, y axis, uh, so, they can, so some of the, some of the um, ratio are below zero. So here's an example. On the left hand side is OSRM, on the right hand side is the Google Map. Um, as you can see, that OSRM takes a shorter road, uh, it's definitely a lot shorter than Google Maps. And the time the OSRM spend is uh, shorter than Google Maps does. Here's another. Um, it's basically feel. I'm not sure if whether why the uh, coordinates have shifted. Um, the coordinates basically map, maps to the same point, where um, the Google Maps on the right hand side takes a very large detour and, and ends up with the same point, with Tinfield. And uh, OSRM uh, just stays where it is, which makes, uh, makes sense. So our conclusion is, um, we compare uh, in terms of uh, the routing quality, they are pretty quite close. And it disagrees more on the east uh, or on the west. Uh, it's either because of the routing algorithm are different, um, while some uh, voodoo, I, d I don't understand, in OSRM routing engine. Uh, and or because of data difference, probably Google Maps has more uh, data up to date, more traffic information. Okay, so move on to the second part. It's point of interests. Uh, the ability of a map to look at point of interest can mean a lot for users to uh, pee in a place quickly. So we have two mingles. One is how well can OSM look at POIs and does the performance vary by different regions. So to study how well can OpenStreetMap uh, look at POIs, uh, we have to choose, we, we, we chose uh, 110,000 110, uh, restaurants across 3,026 counties in the US to, to test OpenStreetMap. Uh, we use a proprietary third party point of interest database to find restaurants. And from the whole data set, I, um, we take 50 samples from each county without replacement. Uh, then we feed the coordinates into OrderPass API um, for each coordinate, a circle range, the overpass API basically, for each coordinate, a circle range with a radius of 100 meters. I set it as 100 meters. You can set it as 500 meters, doesn't matter. Uh, will be searched such that any property in the circle will be returned. Um, if a property's name is quite similar to a point of interest expected name, um, we would mark it as found. That's how we check the existence of point of interest name. Uh, down below, you can see, uh, um, well, one uh, uh, data, about five, five entries, the trimmed version because there are a bunch of um, unused columns in between. Um, some churches chicken is in Alabama, uh, Prattville, it's a, uh, I believe it's a county, yeah, uh, and it's in 400 South Memorial Drive. Uh, notice that notice uh, the bottom, uh, the last two columns are, are add-on columns. Mm, the second last is the matching score. Zero means that it doesn't get matched in OSM. You can actually try it on OSM right now. It, it's just not, uh, there's nothing in there. And uh, Google Maps does has it, I just tried last night. Um, the NA was supposed to be, if there are some matching score on it, uh, NA will be some JSON response where you, know, you can get some detailed information about that restaurant. 
So here's a map overview. Uh, out of 110,000 randomly sampled restaurants across uh, about 3,000 counties, only 11%, which is um, 11,000 are found in OpenStreetMap, which is, uh, I, I couldn't say it's a, it's a, it's a, high, it's a high score. Uh, we also found that more densely populated area tends to carry more matched restaurants. Uh, the matching probability also relates to date, where a restaurant is first recorded in the yellow page, the thick book. Um, uh, so the newer restaurant, the last probability that it is on OpenStreetMap, which makes sense, because relying on solely the community contribution, uh, OSM has a limited ability of keeping the point of interest database up to date. Uh, on the left is a, um, is a US map uh, again. Uh, the color means the matching score. You can see that some rural areas almost has zero matching score. Here are the best 10 counties in point of interest completeness. Um, some of the states, uh, states and uh, counties are the locations where our previous OpenStreetMap conference are held. I can see the uh, Washington King, Seattle, right, DC. Uh, California, some Colorado, El Paso. It's in, I believe it's a few kilometers down below uh, uh, where the border is. Yeah, and uh, the average score, you can just multiply by 100. It's, it's a fraction and integer difference. The count means a number of samples in that county I, I sampled, yeah. Um, okay, so here's another box plot. Uh, the x-axis is, uh, is again by the state number. Uh, as you can see, the 08 means Colorado. Down below, it's spelled, it's about here. This is Colorado. So the first one is high up there, because uh, DC has only one county, which is DC itself. So it's only one thin, very thin bar. So it's high up there. Thanks for DC contributors. Um, the, the color again means the east and west, east, middle, and west. Sorry, couldn't get the color incoherent with each slide. Sorry about that. Um, so these are sorted, sorted by the matching score on the y-axis. Uh, as you can see that um, the top 10 entries from the right-hand side are almost, all of them are uh, in the east or west. So um, one further question we want to ask is, which we find pretty, pretty interesting, which fast food, uh, fast food restaurants get matched the most? Is it KFC, Burger King, or McDonald's, or something else? To answer this question, I separate data into two groups, um, which is basically non-fast food chains or fast food chains. Non-fast food chains, out of uh, 100,000 examples, there are 80% of them. It's pretty high. Uh, highest bar again, it's in DC, followed by um, some, some states in the, in the west for red color. Uh, on the upper left is the, um, is the mean of uh, each, each region, west, east, and middle. The, the, the middle has, a high, has the lowest uh, matching score, which is 7.3. So for fast food chains, we have about 20% uh, of the data set examples. I picked some of the, some of the most popular fast food chains, uh, as you can see KFC over there, Arby's, and I've been there. Um, McDonald's, I love McDonald's. Um, yep, and DC again, it's in the top highest bar. I'm not sure why DC is so high. Does someone know? Yeah, it's in the highest bar. It's about around 30, 30%, yeah. And in average, the West is 23%, the West is, uh, has 23% of matching score. The mid has 22%, where rest, uh, um, Sorry, the east has 20% and the mid has 15%. Compared to the last slide, it's about two times higher for known fast food chains. Um, and, the mean, and the mean for all is 20%. 20, 20, 20%. So guess who's the highest? Nope. Subway is actually one of the lowest. The highest is McDonald's. McDonald's has 32% of matching score. And the color stands for the number of entries it has in the I sampled. Basically, so on the, it's pretty small, uh, the legend over on the very right. Uh, the uh, McDonald's have about 5,000 entries in host days and also has a very high matching score, which is 32%. While the subway has uh, around 6,000 6, or 5,500 5, 5, 
and it's a very low matching score, second last. Um, I didn't include, I, I don't think I include um, some, uh, you know, um, some festival chains that only only in the West Coast because there are just too few entries. And also one one, note, one fact that I found uh, interesting is that, well, OSM contributors probably like burgers more, because because the um, first few entries are McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, and the last few entries are uh, Papa John's, Domino's, uh, or or Subway. Subway is not a although it's not a Pizza Hut, yeah. Um, it's either because OpenStreetMap contributors love uh, McDonald's or because McDonald's employees are OpenStreetMap contributors. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. So, this is our conclusion. Let me close it up. Uh, in the West and East, 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 a uh, point of interest matching rate is better in average, uh, and uh, faster giants are more likely uh, to appear in an OSM's database. Uh, the directions are comparable to commercial plant, uh, providers like Google Maps, but the POI needs, really needs improvement. Yep. So just in case anyone uh, found my data to be interested, uh, you can download the data in the GitHub. Uh, it takes, uh, quite a, takes us a really quite a long time to gather all the data because you have to call every API or you have to set up the whole overpass database in your AWS server. So it's really uh, precious data, um, and thank you so much.